Now the uh, regulation says that if, if there are residue tests taken, if there's reason to suspect contamination, and a crop, organic crop, is tested, and if it goes over 5% of the EPA tolerance for a given pesticide, that crop can no longer be sold as organic. It can still be sold as food unless it goes over 100% of the uh, tolerance, but it can't be sold as organic if it's over 5% of the EPA tolerance. Um, now, uh, I mentioned that GMOs are prohibited, and there's huge issues with genetic drift. Now, with pollen from BT corn, especially, you know, it travels for o over a mile, uh, you know, on the wind we get around here uh, uh, during pollination season, you know, that pollen can uh, uh, drift. Well, this regulation does not set a threshold one way or another about GMO contamination. And the USDA has said GMOs are not allowed, drift is not our business, <laughs> they didn't set a, regu uh, a level, and therefore the product, even if it's tested, could still be sold as organic, but the buyers are testing and they're rejecting. So it, the farm might still remain certified because there's not been a violation because of that genetic drift. Um, but the buyers are testing and they're rejecting products, especially if those products are being exported or if they're going into baby food, uh, things like that. Uh, or, or some companies have very rigorous testing protocols and will reject, even if the crop is still certified organic, if it shows up with any GMOs, they're going to reject it. But it's a market-driven tolerance right now, not a legal tolerance like we have on the uh, pesticide residues. So there is a violation uh, now, or, or a, a fine that's possible. Uh, anybody that knowingly sells or mislabels a product uh, in violation uh, can face up to a $10,000 fine per violation. So each sale of a fraudulent product could be a violation. Um, the state of Minnesota has taken action in the past and prosecuted people for fraud. So far, since the rule went into effect in 2002, USDA has not prosecuted anyone. Uh, no one has received that $10,000 fine per violation under the federal law. Um, many people, though, have lost their certification because of misconduct one way or another. So the certifiers certainly are doing their job uh, in, in policing this, but it has, none of the cases have gone so far to the Attorney General and prosecution under federal law yet. But it's a matter of time. But that's one reason we wanted the federal law was to protect the organic claim. Uh, essentially, you know, from fraudulent activities. So I've just got a few different uh, studies now that I'll summarize before uh, we open it up for any questions or discussion. Uh, here's one out of Iowa State. Uh, they have uh, some long-term organic uh, research uh, going on at several locations now, a very, and they actually have a full professor in organic agriculture, a very robust organic research program going on there. And looking at, uh, this was four years of data, uh, looking at the soil quality between organic and conventional, uh, and also looking at yields. Uh, so here, they found that the organic systems increase yield and improve soil quality. By the fourth year of the organic rotation, the, corn, the organic corn and soybean yields went above those of the conventional fields, and the improved performance of the organic plots being attributed to improvements in the soil quality, more organic matter, better microbial activity, more diverse community of organisms, and reduced soil acidity. Um, 
So that was from Iowa State, University of Minnesota. Uh, we have 120 acres certified organic out at Lamberton, a Southwest Research and Outreach Center. That's where my position is based out of, but I actually live and work uh, out of Winona. Um, but we've had uh, long-term, 18-year uh, now, uh, certified organic research going on out at Lamberton and have uh, found very similar results. Equivalent yields, uh, better yields in drought years because of this improvement in the organic matter of the soil, which is the sponge which holds moisture, and also uh, when the plants have to work harder for their nutrients, they develop better root systems uh, in the organic, and then when you have a drought year, those two things, better moisture in the organic matter of the soil and more aggressive root systems, uh, the organic yields are better uh, consistently in drought years with uh, non-irrigated conditions. Um, but also uh, the Minnesota research, I don't have a slide on that, um, showed that the organic crops were equivalent profitability as conventional, and these are side-by-side -side replicated studies, uh, large-scale studies uh, out at Lamberton, Con equivalent profitability when the organic was being sold at conventional price. As soon as the actual price premium that's paid for organic, which right now organic corn, if you can get it, is over ten dollars a bushel and conventional is high at uh, over four four to five right now that's unusual um, organic soybeans are sixteen to eighteen dollars a bushel now but conventional is getting pretty high too it's just crazy what's going on now um, but at any rate the minnesota study found that the organic was equivalent profitability when sold at conventional prices. As soon as you factored in the organic prices, uh, it was much more profitable um, uh, per acre. A different study here published in the Journal of Environmental Quality. This is from the University of Minnesota, but looking at groundwater. And this is from out at Lamberton. And uh, looking at alternative cropping systems, including organic, and the amount of water in drainage tile under the fields, conventional and uh, alternative, including organic. It wasn't limited to uh, only organic, but found that uh, the amount of water lost to drainage was 41% less than the conventional corn soybean rotation. So once again, that organic matter in the soil is holding the water so it's not even getting down to the drain tile. Um, and then what's in the water is what's really interesting, that the alternative practices uh, had reduced nitrate nitrogen losses between 59 and 62 percent. So less water going leaching through the soil and the water that does go through much less nitrates. And that's a huge uh, uh, pollutant in our wells uh, uh, and, and surface waters is nitrate pollution and runoff. This is a very interesting study out of Great Britain looking at the composition of mother's breast milk from women eating more organic milk and meat. And uh, other studies have shown that pastured animals, both the milk and meat from grazed animals, grass-fed and organic requires pasture during the growing season, well, that, milk, that kind of meat and milk is higher in this conjugated linoleic acid, a healthy uh, omega, uh, amino acid. Well, this study looked at then the people who'd been eating that meat and milk and studied the composition of the breast milk of women eating that, found that the women consuming predominantly organic milk and meat had about 50% higher levels of this rumenic acid uh, in their breast milk. It's a, the CLA responsible for most of the health benefits 
Uh, authors report greatest reliance, the greater the reliance on the organic beef and dairy farmers of pasture and forage increases the levels of the CLA in the milk and meat, which in turn carries over uh, to the breast milk of the women eating those products.